Yeah, if you uh, gave green or white. Yes. No, no, hold on, hold on. Can you do green? I mean, green. So I'm guessing B ones. You're welcome to Deputy Governor's vi virtual press conference on the August 2022 monetary policy statement. A DG will give his statement and then will we'll be followed by a Q&A. So you're all welcome. DG, your statement, please. Thank you very much, Director of Communication. Um, it's my pleasure to present to you the monetary policy statement for the month of August 2022. At the Monterey Policy Committee MPC meeting held on 12th August 2022, the Bank of Uganda, BOU, increased the central bank rate, CBR, by 50 basis points to 9%. The economy continues to face strong cost push inflation pressures from external environment, dry weather conditions, and exchange rate depreciations amidst weak domestic demand. The annual headline and core inflation rose to 7.9% and 6.3% in July 2022 from 6.8% and 5.5% in June 2022, respectively. Annual food crop inflation continued to rise from 14.5% in June 2022 to 16.4% in July 2022, and annual uh, electricity, fuel, and utilities, EFU, inflation rose from 14.2% to 17.2% in the respective month. The BOU forecast showed that inflation for 2022 remains in the range of 7 to 7.4%. The inflation outlook is driven by the lagged impact of higher exchange rate depreciation, dry weather that has resulted in the sharp rise of food crop prices and a complete pass through of global inflationary pressures. The risk to the above outlook for inflation are tilted to the upside and they include one, a further intensification of geopolitical tensions which could ignite a renewed surge in oil prices. A renewed increase in the oil prices due to the worsening geopolitical tensions. Faster policy rate tightening by advanced economies, which could result in higher depreciation of the shilling. Continued escalation of global inflationary pressures amidst persistently higher world food and energy prices as well as lingering supply shortages. And the higher domestic food prices should the dry weather conditions become more protracted. And finally, a threat of inflation expectations getting significantly de-anchored. However, there are downside risks which include weaker domestic household consumption and investment expenditures as higher, as tighter financial conditions and higher inflation reduce disposable incomes. Emergence of a global recession, which could dampen the global inflationary pressures much faster than currently assumed, resulting in a decline in imported inflation. A rebound in the favorable rainfall across the country, which could lead to bumper food crop harvests. Global production and distribution disruptions could ease, and global policy tightening could result in faster declines in energy and goods prices. The quarterly GDP estimates by the Uganda Bureau of Statistics, UBOS, indicate that the economy contracted by 1.6% quarter on quarter in the month of March 2022. All sectors of the economy contracted, with the services sector taking the biggest hit. In addition, 
the Composite Index of Economic Activity, CIEA, continued to signal a slowdown in economic activity. The growth of the CIEA reduced from a quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of 2.1% in December 2021 to 1.4% 1 in March and June 2022. The growth of the CIEA slowed down to 3.9% year-on-year in June 2022 from 4.6% in March 2022. Overall, economic growth prospects have been deemed further with the increasing risks of global recession and weaker consumer and business sentiments as high inflation and commodity prices continue to erode household and business incomes and financial conditions tighten. Economic growth is now projected in the range of 2.5 to 3% in 2022, partly reflecting the effects of higher costs of production arising from fuel and transportation on activity. But it will rise to 5 to 6% in 2023, in part supported by public investments and recovery in demand as inflationary pressures begin to wane. The risks to the growth outlook are tilted to the downside, including the emergence of global recession, escalation of geopolitical conflicts, heightened global economic uncertainty, and higher inflation. Other downside risks are further, uh, a further decline in consumer confidence, heightened exchange rate volatility, and extended weakening of investor optimism. In the medium term, the economy is projected to grow in the range of 6.5 to 7 percent, supported by public and private investments in the oil sector. In the near term, that is 12 months ahead, Bank of Uganda forecasts that inflation pressures will continue to rise. While the current increases in the CBR are meant to bring back inflation to its medium-term objective of 5%, these have led to the indirect effects in lowering the pace of depreciation of the exchange rate, which is expected to cushion the inflation pressures. In addition, the committee noted the recent support from the tightening of the fiscal policy to address the current inflationary pressures. The committee therefore decided to raise the CBR by 50 basis points to 9%. The ban on the CBR remains at plus minus 2 percentage points. The margins on the CPR for the rediscount and the bank rates will remain at 3 percentage points and four percentage points respectively. Consequently, the rediscount and the bank rates will be 12% and 13% respectively. Going forward, the MPC considers that the monetary policy stance will have to be tightened even further if inflationary pressures persist to ensure that inflation reverts to its medium term target of 5%. That marks the end of the statement, and I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, DG. And now we'll go into the Q&A. But before we go into the Q&A, I would like to mention that we have um, Dr. Adam, Executive Director of Research, with us, and uh, Dr. Abuka, Executive Director of Operations, and Dr. Twinema Anzitu Mubwene, Executive Director, Supervision. So, um, re um, reporters, journalists, if you could um, mention your name and the media house you're working for, and um, uh, we'll take your questions. Thank you.
Hello? Are you there? Hello? Okay, if you could raise your hands, please. Raise your hands, please. Okay, um, uh, we have a question from, who's this? Maddox, um, but didn't state which uh, media outlet. But does the reduction in the hike, does the reduction in the hike quantum signal a dampening economic outlook, less so inflationary pressure? DG, um, does the reduction in the hike quantum five, five BPS from 100 BPS signal a dampened economic outlook, less so inflationary pressure? Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, the Monterey Policy Committee, when uh, considering decision to raise the CBR by 50 basis points, took into account all the other data and also other developments in the various sectors in the economy. You might have also written, uh, noticed that um, the Ministry of Finance uh, sometime uh, uh, in the recent um, three, three, four weeks back did announce that they were reducing on the releases of, for the quarter, for quarter one to a tune of about four trillion shillings in support of the efforts to tighten uh, monetary, I mean, to tighten uh, the, the inflationary pressures. So in considering all this, we found it optimal to have a modest increase in the CBR of 50%, while of course knowing that the inflationary pressures are still with us and uh, this need to uh, to to do everything possible to bring back the inflation to its medium term target of five percent. Thank you, DG. Let's go to Michael Balake. Um Could you state your um, media outlet, Michael, and your question? Good afternoon. My name is Michael Balake. I work for CGTN. Can I be heard? Am I heard? Yes, you can. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Uh, yes, I, I work for CGTN Africa. I would like to ask, um, well, it's a general question. What exactly is putting um, pressure on the US dollar, oh, not on the US dollar, but on the local currency? Why is our currency, what, what imports, for example, if, if we can relate them to products, are putting more pressure on the local currency? And two, we'd also like, we have also realized that uh, we have there are reports that banks have failed or are not lending out money because they fear that the people will not be able to pay back. Uh, I don't know whether Dr. Twinemans will be able to answer this. Thank you very much. Okay, um, let me answer the question on uh, the pressure on the Uganda currency. And since you directed the question of bank lending to Dr. Twine, he will respond to that. But also in my answer, uh, Dr. Damugume will come on board to add anything additional. Now, I'm just gonna give a general uh, situation on what is putting pressure on the Uganda currency. 
To me, there are two key factors which are contributing to the pressures on, on the Uganda currency. The first one is that as a result of the uh, global uh, inflation, the price of imported goods has increased generally. So to the extent that Ugandans have not substantially reduced their importation in terms of quantity of these goods, it means that for the similar amount of goods that we're importing, given the high international prices, we are, are demanding for more US dollars to import about this amount of goods. If you look at on the supply side, the, the, uh, the prices of our exports have not risen significantly to offset for the rise in the import prices. So as a result, we are spending more to import for uh, just uh, the similar amount of the imports that we've been having in the past. So that's one of the, uh, the causes. And then the cause is that as a result of the tightening of the liquidity conditions in the advanced economies by the central banks, as they also uh, are fighting inflation by raising their, their policy rates, uh, you find that a number of foreign investors who had uh, particularly invested in our securities markets have begun repositioning themselves with the, the, uh, with the hope of trying to get back into, into safe havens. That is where they can uh, maybe uh, earn more uh, interest and also in currencies that they consider safe given the risks that they might be having on the emerging and French economies. So we see that the inflows, which in the past were quite strong when the liquidity conditions in advanced economies were, you know, were rather loose and the interest rates were, were very low, we saw inf the inflows uh, into the country coming to seek the higher returns they were getting from our government securities. So now we seem to be seeing some kind of a reversal of these flows. And of course, when these flows are reversing, they don't reverse back in shillings. They will get back the shillings either through rediscounting their holding of securities, or if there are any securities that are maturing, then they will have to buy back the dollars in order to reportion themselves. So those two factors are what we so far know as the main uh, causes um, adding pressure on the Uganda currency. Maybe, Adam, you want to add some particulars on that? Uh, I think you have, DG, you have elaborated on the major co uh, main causes of the exchange rate depreciation. Uh, perhaps uh, to amplify what we have said, if we look at, say, oil imports, we used to spend around $800 million per year in terms of uh, imports on fuel. Uh, of recent, has climbed up to around $1.2 billion, which is an increase of around between $400 and $500 million. Automatically means that now uh, the same amount of fuel or oil imports uh, really requires uh, high amount of dollars, and therefore amplifying what uh, the governor has said as a, a, as a main cause. The other aspect is uh, also to note that remember that, for example, if you look at the euro vis-a-vis -vis the dollar, uh, one euro used to be to exchange for about 1.2, 1.3 dollars. Of recent, you would see that basically the euro, the euro and the dollar are at par, which means that uh, the, the dollar, U.S. dollar is gaining strength compared to the other currencies. And as it happens, therefore, it automatically means that also it spills over into the domestic economy, apart from amplifying what the deputy governor said in terms of people shifting their resources uh, uh, into the dollars, uh, uh, looking for be better returns and also probably what we call safe haven in terms of uh, investment. Basically, those are the I, those are the main, uh, ma main uh, uh, issues. Related to that is a question of saying, 
if for example you are oil oil farm that is importing oil and you see oil prices are rising and the demand for the dollars or if you are import of raw materials the, what we have seen in the market is that obviously as exchange rate starts moving you pre, uh, preempt your purchase of dollars even when you don't need the dollars at the moment so bit of saying okay instead of waiting for one month or two months to, imp uh, to buy the dollars to import uh, the raw materials or oil you do it uh, uh, say uh, 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 much uh, much much earlier than what you are what we normally uh, do so amplifying therefore the depreciation pressures that would happen in a particular uh, month or quarter uh, that's what I can add at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, EDR. Um, Dr. Twine, could you answer the question? Yes. Um, the, que the question was uh, the, the allegation that banks have stopped lending or that they're worried about customers not being able to repay their loans in case they lend. I think broadly, to summarize your question, is that you're asking why there's a slowdown in private sector credit. And um, the, the deputy governor already mentioned this in the statement, but largely um, it's the weak domestic demand. There's been a slowdown in, um, in, the, in demand uh, within the market, and this is reflected in the, in the drop in the composite index of economic activity which I think has dropped year on year from 3.9%, uh, sorry, 4.6% year on year to, from, to March 2022 to 3.9% year on year to June 2022. So the, the slowdown in credit is largely explained by the, the, mute, the muted uh, growth in or expectations about the, the economy. So the slow weak demand is what explains the slowing down of private sector credit. And also, largely, that the other conditions out within the wider macroeconomy have also increased the, the lender's um, risk averseness. So it's a combination of increase, um, risk aversion going up by the banks so because of conditions out within the wider macroeconomy and also an observed slowdown in, um, in economic activity. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Twine Manzi. Um, are there um, more hands, please? And nothing on the chat either. Okay, if there are no more hands, I think this is the end of the um, press conference. Thank you very much, and um, have a nice weekend. <laughs>